So at this point we've talked about polynomials, we've talked about rational functions, we have not, however, talked about trig functions. And it turns out proving things with trig functions is, is pretty tricky here, so we're going to start to just look at a couple of very simple trig limits here before we start to talk about everything else. We'll come back and revisit trigonometry a little bit more uh, in the following sections, but for now we're just going to sort of ease into it a little bit. Um, we don't want to overwhelm ourselves with trigonometry here. So we can actually use the squeeze theorem, what we talked about in that last video, to show that the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x is equal to 0, and the limit as x approaches 0 of cosine of x is equal to 1 here. And so for this, remember, we need that lower function and an upper function. So I've gone ahead and, and shown uh, the squeeze theorem for sine of x here. Here, sine of x is stuck between uh, negative absolute value of x and positive absolute value of x. So this guy up here, this red line, this is y equals absolute value of x. That's my upper function. My lower function down here, y equals opposite absolute value of x. And then that green oscillating function in the middle here, I have y equals sine of x here. And if you look at where sine of x goes, sine of x is always in between my red function and my blue function, my upper function and my lower function. So as I get closer and closer and closer to zero, because I can look at absolute value. Absolute value is a piecewise defined function, uh, so we can break it down into parts. We can talk about polynomials here. Um, both of these limits, we could show that um, this limit right here of negative absolute value of x is zero and positive absolute value of x is zero. The graph does a really nice job of just showing it. It's, they're all converging to this point right here. And since sine of x is stuck between those two on both sides, there's nowhere for it to go other than to zero. So this is a really, really nice uh, visual representation of the squeeze theorem. If you want, I would encourage you to go and check out for cosine of x. We can do something similar here. We're going to look at 1 minus absolute value of x is less than or equal to cosine of x is less than or equal to uh, 1 here. So I would encourage you to look at that as well. Um, I'm using a tool here called Desmos. It's actually, there's a little logo right here, Desmos. It's a really nice graphing tool. If you ever want to take a look at a graph or just get a feel for what it looks like, um, this is a tool I highly recommend. There's uh, iPhone and Android apps. There's a website. It's, it's a great free resource for you to use. So right now, we're only going to be talking about the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x and cosine of x. We're not going to worry about any other x values or any other trig functions. We're just going to worry about sine of x and cosine of x. So we're going to look at just one quick example here. We want to evaluate the trig limit here. Here I've got limit as x approaches 0 of cosine of x minus 1 all over cosine squared x minus 1 here. So just one little note here just to remember some notation. Remember that cosine squared x, this guy right here, that really means cosine, oops, here let me clean that up, it's a little bit hard to read. It really means cosine of x squared. So just keep that in mind. I know that notation I think can be a little bit confusing, but that's really what that says. So here you might say, okay, well, let's try plugging this in. Let's try evaluating this. Really what I, I, I guess I should technically be doing first is using my limit laws here. I really should be saying, okay, let's look at the limit as x approaches 0 of my numerator, cosine of x minus 1, all over limit as x approaches 0. Here I have cosine squared x minus 1, and then keep applying those limit laws. But I think that they're intuitive enough to the point where we could kind of figure those out as we go along. So here I know that the limit as x approaches 0 of cosine of x, that's equal to 1 minus 1. In my denominator here, remember cosine squared x, if you need to, maybe we'll just rewrite this as cosine of x squared. So I know that the limit as x approaches 0 of cosine of x is 1 squared, which is 1. I have 0 over 1 minus 1, 0 over 0. Oh boy, another indeterminate form. 
So we need to go back, we need to approach this problem in a different way. We're going to have to do a little bit of algebra here. So some of you might look at this and think, I see, okay, this cosine squared x, or you might even see cosine squared x minus 1. You might be thinking about the uh, Pythagorean identity, which is sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. A lot of us would probably jump straight to that, to which I would say that's good that you're thinking about it, and I'm really happy that you know that trig, uh, that trig identity. That's really like the one that I think you should know. Um, but actually, we're not going to be using that here. We actually just need to factor this. So let me just rewrite this limit statement here. I've got limit as x approaches 0. I have cosine of x minus 1 all over cosine squared x minus 1. Remember that this guy right here, this is really cosine of x squared. So if I look at that denominator, I see, well, that's cosine of x squared. 1 is also a perfect squared. This is really 1 squared. This is really a squared minus b squared. This is a difference of two perfect squares. So I know it's going to factor really, really nicely here. I should have limit as x approaches 0. Numerator is going to stay exactly the same, cosine of x minus 1. Now for my denominator, for this guy right here, I know that a squared minus b squared, this is the same as saying a plus b times a minus b. I just take the square root of each one. So in my denominator, I should have uh, cosine of x plus 1 times cosine of x minus 1. And then would you look at that? We can go ahead and cross out that cosine of x minus 1 from both my numerator and my denominator. Just be careful here with your algebra. At the end here, we have really have limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over cosine of x plus 1 here. From here, we should be able to evaluate this limit rather nicely. 1 over 1 plus 1 would give me 1 over 2 for this limit. So I would absolutely try a couple of these problems just to sort of get a feel for limits with trig functions. We'll be talking about these more in depth in the sections to come.